In this video, I would like to talk about the Presser Polux 150-750 Newtonian telescope. So, if you're planning to buy that specific telescope for astronomy, but still you aren't sure whether the telescope is something for you, then this video is perfect for you, because in this video, I would like to introduce that specific telescope to you. So, in the beginning, I would like to talk about a few basic uh, facts about that specific telescope, and after that I would like to go over to the adventures and disadventures of using that specific telescope. And in the end, I would like to give you my final conclusion, and I'd like to talk about whether I would recommend the telescope or not. So I've been using that telescope over the past few years for astronomy and for astrophotography, and in this video I would like to share my experience with you. This video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it, so all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now we'd like to start. So as I mentioned, first of all, I'd like to talk about um, the a telescope in general. So first of all, about the telescope. So this, this, kind of, this kind of telescope is an Newtonian telescope, which means that there is a mirror built inside. So there are two different types of telescopes. There are more types of telescopes, but in general, there are two different types. And these are those refractor telescopes and the reflector telescopes. And this telescope is a reflector telescope, which means that it's an Newtonian telescope, so it has a built-in mirror. So um, here at the back, there's a mirror and there in the front. So it's very important to mention, first of all, that this telescope has an aperture of 150 millimeters. So that means that the diameter of that optical component, which means, say, the diameter of the telescope, is 150 millimeters. So that aperture is very, very important, especially when observing objects in night sky, because those objects in night sky are usually very, very dark, and therefore it's very important to have a big aperture in order to collect as much light as possible. And 150 millimeters is definitely good for observing objects in night skies, including those galaxies and nebulae. Furthermore, that telescope has a focal length of 750 millimeters, which is great for observing almost all objects. So when observing planets, for example, usually 750 millimeters is not that much. So in this case, a bit more focal length would be better, but when using very long focal length, some objects, so those deep sky objects are, big, are too big in order to see them in one framing when looking through a telescope. So the Andromeda galaxy, for example, is a very, very big galaxy, and with 750 millimeters of focal length, you will see the Andromeda galaxy quite good, not the entire galaxy. So in general, 750 millimeters is great for observing a lot of objects in night sky, and so that's definitely quite good, and that results in focal ratio of f5. Um, the telescope is not that heavy, so 4.6 kilograms, so the Newtonian telescope, 4.6 kilograms of um, entire telescopes, including the telescope, the mount, and the tripod, that's a bit more heavier, but the telescope in, in general has 4.6 kilograms, which is quite good, which means it's not that heavy, which means it's definitely great for getting into that hobby. The mount itself, so that telescope comes with a mount and a tripod as well, and in this case you will get an EQ3 mount. I would like to talk about that, that mount later on because it has some disadvantages, but as I mentioned, I would like to talk about that one later on. So when using the telescope, the way you will get it, the EQ3 mount is okay, but when attaching equipment, it might be a bit too small, but I would like to talk about that one later on. But something I really like about that specific telescope is the equipment that will come with that specific telescope, because there are a lot of accessories that come with a telescope that I really, really like for observing the night sky. So the very first one is a solar filter. Usually you will not get a solar filter when buying a beginner telescope, but in this case you will get a solar filter, and that is so great because you can observe the sun as well, so you can observe those sunspots, and that's definitely amazing when looking through a telescope and you can see those sunspots, and that is definitely something you can do when using that specific telescope. But something that's very important, always use a solar filter when observing the sun. So if you're planning to observe the sun with the telescope, always attach a solar filter to the telescope. That's very, very important. So definitely make sure to attach a solar filter when observing the sun with that specific telescope. Um, furthermore, you will get a smartphone adapter, which is something I really like as well, because usually you need to buy that um, smartphone adapter after buying a telescope. But in this case, that smartphone adapter is included, which means that you can directly start capturing images of the night sky, so of those planets, of the sun, when using a solar filter, and of the moon for sure. So there are a lot of objects you can directly start imaging. Furthermore, you will get a finder scope. Um, it's a red dot finder scope. 
it's not the, one of the best finder scopes you can definitely upgrade that but i'd like to talk about that one later on because there are a few options i would definitely recommend for you to buy so that you can upgrade the telescope which makes it easier for you to find objects in the night sky so as i mentioned in the beginning 750 millimeters is not that much for observing planets for example but in this case you will get a barlow lens it's a three times barlow lens which is great for capturing images or observing uh, the planets for example or the moon because you can increase the focal length when using the barlow lens so when using that specific barlow lens you will get a focal length of more than 2000 millimeters so more than two meters which is perfect for capturing images of planets for example and as we mentioned you need an eyepiece to observe those objects and you will get two different eyepieces when buying that specific telescope. So on the one hand, you will get a 4mm eyepiece and a 20mm eyepiece. So you have two different eyepieces, which is great for observing different objects, but still I would recommend to buy another eyepiece as well for observing other objects as well. So I personally uh, bought a 9mm eyepiece, which is perfect for that telescope. So when buying the telescope, I would definitely recommend to buy another eyepiece as well. But now we'd like to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using that specific telescope. First of all, I'd like to start with the advantages of that telescope. And that is definitely for sure the optical quality of that telescope. So I've attached that telescope to my big mount in order to do some deep sky astrophotography. And I was able to capture an image of the Pinwell Galaxy, so M101. So the image you are currently seeing was captured with that telescope on my bigger mount. So it's the HEQ5 Pro Go to mount, which is, which is a bit bigger, which is made for deep sky astrophotography. But still, I used that telescope that came with that telescope. And it's pretty amazing that you can do deep sky astrophotography with that telescope and still the image quality is definitely quite good. So definitely if you would like to use that telescope for deep sky astrophotography, you can definitely do so. You can definitely replace the mount to do deep sky astrophotography. And that is something I really like about that telescope because some beginner telescopes, the optical quality is not that good. But in this case, I'm really, really happy with how um, this, uh, this telescope turned out to be in deep sky astrophotography. So that's definitely something I would like to mention about that telescope. Furthermore, I really like about that telescope that you will get a lot of equipment with that telescope. So as I mentioned, usually when buying beginner telescopes, um, you will not get a solar filter or a smartphone adapter. And this is definitely something I recommend that telescope because you will get everything you need to get your first steps into astronomy and astrophotography because you can directly start capturing those objects in night sky. That's definitely something I really like about that telescope. But furthermore, there are unfortunately a few disadvantages that I'd like to talk about right now. So on the one hand, it's the finder scope. So in this case, you'll get red dot finder scope. So that finder scope is great for finding objects such as the moon or planets. That's definitely okay, but if you're planning to find those very dark objects, so those galaxies and nebulae, that's definitely something that will be very, very difficult because that laser dot is so bright that, that you will not see those very dark objects in night sky. Therefore, I would recommend to buy another finder scope for that telescope. I personally use the Telerit finder scope. Um, I have already made a video about that specific finder scope. I will link on the video right here. So you can click on that video. And this is definitely something I would recommend because that helps you to find those objects easier and faster in the night sky. So this is definitely something I would recommend to do. Furthermore, um, a disadvantage is the mount in general. So when using the telescope, the way you will get it, the mount is okay. For sure, if it's windy, that might be a problem, but when planning to attach um, different equipment to the telescope, including a camera, an astro computer, such as the CWO ASIO Pro, or heavier equipment, such as a heavy eyepiece, that might be a problem for that mount, definitely. So it's always moving if it's windy and when attaching a lot of, equi a lot of equipment to that telescope. So this is definitely something I'd like to mention to you, but when using the telescope, the way you will get it, the mount is definitely okay, but if you're not happy with the mount in the future, you can definitely replace the mount in the future to, um, have a better observing experience, but when using the mount, the way you will get it to so the telescope, that's definitely not that big problem. But still, it's very important for me to mention that because that's definitely something you need to know about when buying that specific telescope. But now to my conclusion. So in general, I would definitely recommend that telescope because it's not that expensive and still you will get a telescope with great optical quality, with a lot of accessories that can directly start observing the night sky. So in general, it's definitely a telescope I recommend 
if you are planning to get started into astronomy. For sure, there are those Dobsonian telescopes as well, which is a great option as well. But if you are planning to buy a telescope with uh, an equatorial mount, this is definitely a great option. If you have any questions on the telescope, so on how to use a telescope, on the accessories or in general, definitely make sure to ask me down below in the comments and it would definitely help you. And if there are a lot of questions, I, will, I would like to do another video in which I would like to answer all of those questions. And if this guide and this video was helpful to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.